Hi everyone, and welcome to Fanshawe College's virtual open house. My name is Kendra Matheson, and I work in the reputation and brand department of Fanshawe College, and I'll be hosting today's session. I'm joined today by Karen Harley and by Alex Jaworski, who are with the costume production program in our School of Digital and Performing Arts. So, um, thank you for that slide, Karen. Uh, before we get it, begin today's session, I just want to go over a few items on how this is going to operate and then I'll toss it over to Karen for the presentation. So, um, as you may already know, your, your webcams and mics are turned off for the session. So we can't see you, we can't hear you at this point. Um, if you have any questions throughout the session, we'd love to hear them. We really welcome questions at this point. So use the questions feature um, on, the, on the same page here and just click on a question mark and you can start typing and we will collect all of these questions during the presentation and during the Q&A session and um, we'll make sure they get asked and answered after the presentation. We'll do our best to get through all the questions submitted within, this, within the session time. So if you're looking for more information like outside of the program on other topics as it says on the slide here, you can either just check out the other sessions that are going on today or you can email us at myfuture at fanshawc.ca. We'll make sure you have that email at the end. So lastly, one final thing, if you have multiple programs open on your computer right now, it might hinder the session a little bit. Uh, it might lag a little bit. So if you can close as many, as many windows as you can and keep open the webinar, that would be fantastic. So right now I'll hand it over to Karen, who is the coordinator of the program, uh, costume production at Fanshawe and Alex and I will be back for the Q&A after the presentation. Thanks, Kendra. Hi, I'm Karen Harley. I'm the, co I'm the coordinator for the costume production program. Apparently, I don't know how to speak, but that's okay. Um, so a little bit about the program itself, some, some program details. Um, this is a um, it used to be a three semester postgrad program. It is now a two semester um, postgrad certificate program. Um, the, the goal of this program is to actually build strong skills in sewing, pattern making, and tailoring. We give you those foundational skills so that you can work in the industry, whether that be in theater, whether that be film, whether that be in the cosplay world, whatever that is that is important to you. We are giving you those skills to be a good costume technician. So you can read um, here that we are um, we develop your skills in costume interpretation. So we're giving you the ability to look at a sketch, understand the sketch, understand where that period is, what um, what fabrics might be right for it, um, and then you'd move to building that costume. So the pattern drafting, and then the costume construction comes. So that's building the actual costume sketch that you have in front of you. Um, so we also um, have the opportunity to collaborate and contribute with the other theater programs. So production and performance programs, we build um, twice a year, we build uh, shows. So in the fall semester, and then again in the winter semester. Um, the other thing that you have at the end of your semester, so in that winter semester, you would be divided into two different groups. Um, you possibly could go out on your field placement early on or the latter part of the, uh, your final semester. But we give you the opportunity to work in the professional theater companies, in TV locations, in films, um, film wardrobes. So those are the, just a few of the places you're going to hear about in a little bit. So uh, the program highlights, we build, do period cutting for women. We do men's tailoring, we do costume construction, and if anyone is um, curious as to what costume construction is, that is your sewing class. But in the industry, we call that we call it costume construction. Um, costume and accessories and millinery, you get to learn how to build jewelry and to build hats. Um, dyeing and breakdown, which is a very important part of our industry, so dyeing fabrics, breaking down costumes, you'll get a bit of a taste of what all of that is. Collaborative practice, which it gives you an opportunity to work on real shows in real time. So field placement, these are just a few of the places over the years where our students have gone to, to um, work in their, in their field placement time. So uh, Stratford Festival, the Shaw Festival, the Grand Theatre here in London, the Band Centre in Alberta, Next Step, which is a TV series in Toronto, 
Soul Pepper, which is a theater company in Toronto, Drayton Entertainment, which is a wardrobe that facilitates uh, six other theater companies, um, and that's in southwestern Ontario. Costume rental houses, some of them have been in Toronto, others have been um, out in, in the east. So those are just a few of the places that you could possibly do your placement. Um, weekly class hours. Our fall semester is you have seven classes, which um, accumulates to about 27 hours a week of classes. So then there's homework on top of that. Um, our winter semester is an accelerated semester, so to accommodate our field placement. So you have five classes for seven weeks, and then you flip it and you go into placement, which is six weeks at 40 hours a week for 240 hours, or the reverse. So assignments and homework, you can expect homework, weekly assignments for your cutting, tailoring, and costume construction class. You'll have in-class exercises that you will be um, working on each week. Um, you'll have major projects for most of your courses. So your uh, accessories millinery class, you would have a hat that you possibly need to build in your outside time. There's definitely group work that you um, will be doing while you're here. And then there will be real experience on shows. So we will be building the costumes for the Shakespeare projects, which we can typically do, and or our graduating capstone project. We take you on excursions. We take you to um, the Stratford and uh, Shaw. These are usually two trips that we do in the fall so that you can actually see um, live theater and experience what it's like. And we have lots of discussions around what the costumes are. We typically pick period plays so that you get a sense of what period recognition is so that you start to understand that different per periods mean different things. We go to the Grand Theatre here in London to see shows. We have guest speakers that come in, people that have been working in the film industry, excuse me, dyers that have been working in the industry, whatever we feel who um, might give you some benefit to uh, working out there in this, this crazy industry. So uh, tours of the Stratford Festival, Shaw, the National Ballet, the Grand Theatre, the Canadian Opera Company, we make sure that you get to see what it's like to work in a real wardrobe, the size of the space, what it, uh, what it feels like to be in those spaces. Some of them are very intimate and some of them are very large. So here's a, few, a collage of some of the, the um, productions that we've been working on since we um, arrived here seven years ago in the downtown campus at, uh, of London. So this one is one of our Shakespeare projects. It was uh, Midsummer's Night Dream, and these are the fairies. So we tend to do our shows in lots of different ways. We use modern clothing. We use, sometimes they're done in just a black t-shirt and a pair of jeans, and they create their own characters through props. This one, there was a little bit more creativity through their own clothing and what they felt a fairy would be. So there's all kinds of different ways that we do this. This is one of our very first shows that we produced. This is Shelley and the Idealist. And these are the, the, we built all of these period costumes. So you often will have one show that's period and one show that is modern. Here is another period play, and this one is Our Town. So we had the ability to build quite a few of these. These hats were built by the students, and so were the corsets and the petticoats and all of the things that go with building period costume. Here's another one of our period pieces. I'm just giving you a collection of what um, involvement a period show can have. So what you what you see there, everything on that show was built. This is Picnic, so this is a, and for us, this would be a period show. It was a 1950s show, so this would not be considered modern. Modern would be in the last 10 years. This was Drums in the Night. The students built all of these um, costumes. Sometimes we take, as that green suit there you will see, sometimes we take modern clothes and revamp them to be character costumes, and that's very much a character costume. This is of, a, of Mice and Men. This is one of our most successful plays that we've done here since we came downtown. It's very realistic. Um, the set itself was um, quite realistic and you felt like you were in that world in the uh, Great Depression. So who will be teaching you? Industry professionals. So we have um, industry professionals that are working um, every day in the industry. Um, and they come from places like the Shaw Festival, the Grand Theater, Stratford, the Banff Center, so um, the Globe Theater. So those are places that we gather um, 
professors that give you the, the most current knowledge in the industry. Um, and we also have some that will have, not, not necessarily working in this right now, but certainly have the uh, experience to go along with the teaching that you, um, you get here. So teach textbooks and other supplies that, you're, that you'll need. You'll have textbooks in your classroom interpretation class, your period cutting class, your tailoring class, and your con costume construction. So when you apply, you will get a, um, a supply list of the books that you need to, to purchase. You can either purchase them through some of the books that we um, require. You can't get through um, the bookstore. You would have to order them online just because they, are, um, they would be used books. Um, so you would need to provide yourself with a sewing kit and we will give you that list of what that is But we also provide you with a few of the specialized tools that you would use um, During your time here um, You'll also need to have purchase some fabrics and we give you the list of and the, um, the amounts that you would require um, There are very specific types of fabrics that we require in this program And then so you will get that as well. So those are just a few of the things to expect um, Costs on top of your tuition so that's kind of me in a nutshell and a little fast this time. The last um, one I had was I was a little bit over. So this one is a little short. So if anyone has lots of questions, I hope you do. Um, I again am Karen Harley, the coordinator for this program, Costume Production. And my email is kharley at fantrasc.ca. And I'm happy to answer any of your questions at any time. So please do not hesitate to email me with questions, concerns, um, understanding the process as to what it means to apply for our program, what the um, what you need, what the sewing test would be, all of those questions I'm happy to answer. So I will pop it back over to Alex, I believe is going to do the Q&A. Here she is. Yeah, for sure. Um, so if if anybody does have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Um, I am going to ask Karen uh, a quick question myself. Um, after spending lots of time uh, this semester with our costume students who are on site at the downtown campus currently, um, what do you think surprises students the most in their first semester and then at the end of the program? Uh, I think what surprises the students the most is the um, the transition from if they're coming from a fashion design program, the transition from fashion to costume is uh, sometimes difficult for a student. And when they leave here, the, uh, they certainly have a, a much better understanding of the two industries. So they're very, very different. Um, and if you're coming from a tech production background, the interesting thing is all of the new um, pieces that you learn along the way. So it is, it's it's daunting at first, um, but certainly by the time they, their first semester, they're very daunted. And then by the time they hit winter there, it's like, I don't understand what I was worried about. This is so, I mean, it's not easy, but it's, I certainly understand it better. And I have a much better knowledge of moving forward and I have the confidence to work on collaborative practice. So those are the kinds of things that they, they feel and when they leave here and they go out into the industry they certainly feel like they have um, a good sense of what our industry needs excellent they get in the groove they do get in the groove <laughs> um when you know we had the we had a question earlier in the evening when applying is there anything that our future falcon should be expecting to complete before attending the program um i know we talk a little bit it is a post-grad so are, is there a skill set that you're really looking for or or something that they can build on the best way possible when they are in the program the thing that you probably can um, build upon the most um, starting out in this program if you already don't have good strong sewing skills is the book that we um, that we use for our costume construction class is called um, it's the Reader's Digest um, sewing book and it is probably the best laid out um, way of um, looking at the types of uh, things that we do. So it's all your basic, basic skills, basic sewing skills that you need. So if you don't feel strong in, in those skills, I would suggest that you, um, over time, build up practice some of those, you know, basic seams like French seam, all of, you know, the just the different lap zippers, center zipper, simple, simple tasks that are, um, we don't go over a lot because we do have the 
can come in with some knowledge. So those are kinds of the, the different ones that you would probably want to work on. Sewing skills is your number one that you want to work on for sure, because we can teach you pattern making. We can teach you how to tailor, because that's what we do. But your sewing skills, we're building upon your sewing skills. Excellent. Um, okay, and then I guess my last question, while we wait, if there's any questions from our audience, um, if you could re recommend the one thing to students entering the program, what would it be? Oh, goodness. Um, um, an openness to learn and um, the excitement for new knowledge. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I'll just say for anyone um, tuned in that we encourage you to follow uh, Fanshaw SDPA on Instagram uh, because we've been following along with our costuming students all semester um, and we're getting ready for some final reveals for our project and it's really exciting. So uh, please feel free to follow Fanshaw SDPA to see more about that. Um, but other than that, we don't have any questions from the audience. So uh, I'll invite Kendra back to uh to see us out awesome great so i have a slide here um as well that shows uh our contact information if you have any further questions that come up in the coming hours and days then we're happy to get back to you on that Thanks so much to Alex and to Karen for all your time on this presentation and to everyone who attended. Um, just one final reminder also that we are hosting an event on Saturday, again virtually in the same kind of format, that uh, features all of our student services and student life uh, aspects of coming to, coming to Fanshawe. So we'd be very happy for you to come to that as well. You can either just show up at the same website as we are at now, openhouse.fanshawec.ca, or you can watch your email inboxes and we'll be emailing you about that on Friday night so that you won't miss it on Saturday. So if you have any other questions, feel free to add them to the question box and um, we're happy to answer. Um, but if not, then um, you are free to go. Thank you so much for attending this session and thanks again to our presenters. No problem. Hope to see you in the fall. Can't wait. All the things. <laughs> we'll just stay on a little bit longer in case anyone does have questions. But. Yeah, sure. Someone came back. I think some people are hopping in and out a little bit, which is okay. Yeah, it's totally fine. If anyone does have questions for us, uh, just use the questions feature and we're happy to answer them in the last few minutes here. And that's everyone. <laughs> <laughs> They're all gone. No, Slowly I, watch them leave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, can an international student attend one of the domestic ones? They could, but we tried to make it hard. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, so um, basically how the registration was set up, you had to select whether you were a Canadian student or an international student before the programs or areas of interest would show up. So we tried to like flow them through in right. that kind of manner. But at the same time, the international recruiters, I think they sent like specific program links out. 
Right. But there's always room, like it, someone could click Canadian and just get into any of the sessions, really. Right. And if they show up today on openhouse.fanshawe.ca, there was like a, you could jump to today's itinerary and hop in. So that one student from Jamaica may have just shown up today. Gotcha. I don't know. But we're still her time zone here. True. Right. Like, yeah. so, so it's a bit different, maybe yeah. from our students mm -hmm. from India and, yeah. and Korea and that sort of thing. That, That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So flexible. Um, have you done your performance one yet? Or is that com upcoming still? That's coming up. 5.30. Oh, 5.30. Gotcha. And it's not with me, which is so sad. Oh, that's very sad. I'd like to yeah. hear that about myself, that it's sad. But um, it's sad. Randy, I think, is with you guys for the the last one. And I think yeah. I'm happy no. with Rob So, next. Karen, I won't be in that one. So, Brandy um, will be asking your questions mm -hmm. um, in that one because I uh, am in animation at that time. No. Yeah. Animation. Yeah, you're with me, I think. Hey. Yeah. But you're in good hands. And she has questions to ask, or do I need to send her questions? So I did send all of the questions to Julia, but if Brandy logs in and doesn't have them, then the your questions are in your calendar invite from earlier today. Okay. So you can just send them send them to her through a link and then she'll she'll know what to do with them. Okay. Okay. Okie dokie. Cool. Guys, it was so good to see you, Karen. I know, good to see you. We don't get to see people's faces anymore. It's kind of weird, right? Eh? Weird. It is. Super weird. But it's good to see you. I'll see you again right. soon. All the best with your last session. I'll see you in a little bit, Alex. Yep. Yeah. See you soon. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye.